Okay, so we're getting some questions back from customers about it feels like the four drive assist doesn't have enough power to get you up onto foil, yet when they look at it on the videos, it seems effortless. And it really comes down to most part how you're riding the foil and proper technique. And we're gonna go through that right now. If you're struggling to get up out of the water and you have the appropriate wing set up, it's most likely that you're standing too far back on your board and you're making the wing fly through the water like this. So if you're giving it throttle and it feels like the nose of the board is pointing up into the sky, what you're actually doing is you're stalling the wing through the water. The wing can't get flat to fly, it's doing this through the water. What you want to do is move your weight forward on the board, more than you normally would, keep the wing flat so that your speed can build, and then the wing can do what it's designed to do, which is create lift proportionate to how fast you're going. So what we're going to do now is actually simulate what we're talking about. So if I'm too far back on the board, and the angle of attack of the board's like this, and I try and push the wing through the water, see all the drag it's creating? And there's quite a lot of force in my hand. If I shift my weight forward, effortlessly pushes through the water and there's a lot less drag. You also need to understand the effect that the motor has on how the board wants to perform. So you've got a motor that's down on your mast here and it's got a pushing force. As this pushing force pushes this way, with this lever arm, it's trying to push the nose of the board up. So if you counteract that force by moving your weight forward as we've discussed and leaning into the board, it will keep the board flat and prevent the bum, the board dragging through the water and the wing dragging through the water, exactly like a boat. If you've got too much weight in the boat rearward, it's gonna to wanna to push its nose high and never get up on the plane. It's exactly the same principle and the same effect. So if you're normal paddling, you're gonna have your foot position, you're very aware of it, where it is, and it, you don't have much force in your hands, so you're only gonna create a small amount of thrust. Then when you add in the foil drive thrust on top of that, you wanna stay in your normal stance, but maybe shift at least a full foot width further forward. It's gonna depend a little bit on your body weight, but shift forward and lean into it. As you're paddling and your, build is, your speed is building, you can start to move back a bit and neutralize that level of like foot pressure on the board out a bit and you'll feel it wants to come up nice and naturally. But as you start that paddling process, it's gonna feel like you're too far forward, but that's actually what you want to keep the board level. Right, so now we'll show you some demonstrations of what we were just talking about. First uh, rider is Paul here. He's about 95 kilos plus wetty and all that. Let's just call it 100 kilos for this test. We're running the Wing Drifter 60 board, 130 litres. The Axis 19 mil mast, 82 centimetre. And now this is his normal surfing setup. So this is what he goes sub surfing on. And we've got the Axis S1000 wing, which is uh, 1388 square centimetres. And we've got the 390 tail, which is quite fast and nimble and makes this. Uh, this setup, his preferred surfing setup. So what we're going to be demonstrating here is how, if he does the incorrect technique, uh, the board's just going to tilt the nose up, the wing's just going to be in a stalled attitude and won't have enough power to get him up on foil. Whereas if he uses the correct technique, with his weight shifted a little bit further forward, he's leaning forward over the nose to keep that nose of the board down because of the leverage of the motor, he'll be able to get up perfectly fine. So that's the demonstration we'll show you now with his normal surfing setup. Right, so here we go with his weight too far back. The nose comes up, nothing's ever going to happen. The board looks really unstable because the wing's trying to stall. So here Paul's got his weight further forward, he's leaning further forward while under motor power. And you can see the board stays heaps more level and then it takes off. With this wing on, he's only just able to maintain uh, flat water foiling. We have exaggerated this a little bit just to over prove the point because it is fairly subtle the change. But you can see he's leaning further forward. The nose of the board never came up. Just to demonstrate this even further, we've put a much bigger wing on here. It's an Axis 1120, which is significantly larger wing to what I was just riding, and also a larger tail. So the whole wing setup is going to have a lot more lift than my surf setup. But even then, if I use the wrong technique, I'll still stall it and I won't take off. I'll move forward, have the right technique, I'll probably be able to get up out of the water without even paddling. We just want to demonstrate technique is far more important than power and thrust. 
and you need to utilize those things properly to get the desired result. So here we go, here's the S1000 from the previous test at 1388 square centimeters and now the 1120 at 2100 square centimeters with the uh, 400 tail. All right, so here we have after short intermission, fall on the big 2100 square centimeter wing, way too far back, never gonna overcome it. Now he's gonna lean forward. He's gonna over exaggerate it a little bit just to make it more obvious. Let's see how the nose of the board is nice and level. And there you go, he barely has to paddle and he's up. We do have the motor up in the normal surf position at the moment, so hence why you get that bit of rooster tail. But now he can back off on the throttle because he's got a really big wing. It's got lots of lift and he can flat water foil around. Alright, so now we're going to take it to the extreme. I'm 65 kilos, all fully dressed, and we've still got the big Axis 2100 square centimetre wing plugged in, which is what Paul was just riding before. So what we're going to show in this test is that even at my weight, I can normally just pull a trigger and just get up on, on basically any wing. But even with this 2100 square centimetre wing, if I just pull the trigger and have my weight too far back, the nose of the board will ride up, the wing will try and stall and it will just be pushing and ploughing water through the surface and I'll, I'll never be able to get up. If I just move my weight forward a little bit and lean forward while I'm under that motor power like we've been discussing, I should be able to just fly straight up out of the water with it. So too far back, adds more thrust, it just exacerbates the problem. Move your weight forward. Wing starts to fly flat. It lifts and it flies.